Hi everyone, this is Dr. Diana Song Song and we will now discuss the first module of your science part. First, we will start with scientific method. What is the scientific method? It is just an organized way that helps scientists answer a question or begin to solve a problem. So to understand more about scientific method, let us watch the following. Scientists are always curious about the world and how everything works and why it works. And they are interested in inventing new things and making things that have already been invented even better. While scientists are doing their work of discovery and experimenting, they use a kind of roadmap. It's called the scientific method. The scientific method is a series of steps to perform to figure things out, to get to the bottom of things, to discover the answers to the questions of what and why, and how things work, and to make them work better. The scientific method, when followed properly, can help you figure out the answers to some important questions. Let's look at the steps of the scientific method. Step number one is observation. If you're like a scientist, you are naturally curious about the world, aren't you? Maybe when you were younger, you were always asking adults questions like, why is the sky blue? What makes water freeze? What makes lightning? Why do my bicycle tires always go flat? What happens if I touch a hot stove? Hey, don't touch that. You'll burn your fingers. As you looked at the world around you and wondered about things, you were observing. Observation is the first step of the scientific method. Observation requires using one or more of the five senses. What are the five senses? Hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touching or feeling, and then asking the questions or questions, why or how. Asking yourself these questions will lead you to the second step of the scientific method. The second step in the scientific method is to form a hypothesis. An hypothesis is an educated guess or a statement. Usually your statement will go something like this. If I do this, fill in the blank, then I believe this, fill in the blank, will happen. You may not come up with the correct answer at first, but making a guess is a good start. Your guess needs to be able to be tested by other people. Yes, testing. Testing your hypothesis now leads you to the next step in the scientific method, which is to experiment. Experimentation is the third step in the process of the scientific method. This is the fun part. Your experiment may fail and may not support your guess or your hypothesis, or maybe it will. As you test your hypothesis through experiments, you will want to conduct your experiments carefully each time. If you don't get the desired response, you may have to slightly tweak or adjust one of the characteristics of your test. It takes great patience as you go through the experimental phase of the scientific method. Other people who want to test your guess or your hypothesis will need to conduct the experiment the exact same way. Regardless of the result of your experiment, it will lead you to a conclusion. Conclusion, the fourth step in the scientific method of discovery. Your conclusion may be that your experiment supported your hypothesis, which may lead to more questions, or your experiment did not support your guess, your hypothesis. In that case, you will need to conduct further experiments until you get a satisfactory answer, which may still lead to other observations as you continue your path of discovery through the scientific method. It's important to keep a notebook and keep a record of your findings as you follow the steps of the scientific method. Right. Let us just summarize um, what we've um, learned in the previous video. So first, the scientific method starts with the purpose or your question. What is it that you want to learn? Okay. And then next would be your research. You will start um, trying to find out as much as you can regarding your problem. You can look for information in books, on the internet, or by talking to your teacher to get the most information you can get before you start experimenting and then the next one is forming a 
hypothesis or your educated um, educated guess. So an example would be if I grow grass seeds under green light bulbs, then they will grow faster than plants growing under red light bulb. Okay. Next, of course, you will now start doing your experiment. So for example, you would set up grass seeds under a green light bulb and seeds under a red light bulb and observe each um, seeds for a couple of weeks and then you can compare it um, uh, you can compare the results after the couple of weeks and then next of course you will analyze um, what happened in your experiment and your last step of course is your conclusion this is the part where you review the data to check and see if your hypothesis is correct. So let's look at this example. A Philippine science high school scholar acquires skills that he or she develops through the scientific method. Which of the following is not part? Remember, it's not a part of the scientific method. Letter A, analyzing the data he or she has gathered. This is part, right? Letter B, asking questions about what he or she Observe, this is under research, right? Letter C, identifying the problems about the task or the surroundings. Yes, this is actually the first um, step. Of course, letter D, experimenting and making hasty conclusions. This is the answer. This is not part of um, the scientific method. Why? Because although you experimented, you made hasty conclusions. Remember that after experimenting, you still have to analyze, right? You have to analyze your data and then make conclusions. So that's why letter D is the answer for this one. Alright, next, let us now look at the types of variables. You have independent, dependent, and controlled. Let us start with independent. So this is the part of your experiment that you will test or vary to answer your hypothesis. So, for example, we have in this figure, um, you have a plant, and then what are you doing here? you are testing, you are varying um, what you water to your plant. So in this one, in your first um, setup, you're watering it with soft drinks. The other one, you're watering it with juice. And for the last one, you are watering it with water. Okay. So those are what you vary. So that means that will be, that would be your independent variable. What is now your dependent variable? Dependent variable is something that occurs in response to your independent variable. So in this particular example, you want to test um, the height of the plant. Okay, so you want to know which plant will grow faster um, depending on what you put it in but you put in it i mean okay so your dependent variable here is the height and then your controlled variable is just um there are just the quantities that you want to remain constant so for example in this case what would be your controlled variable you are using the same plant the same type same species and then you started with a plant that, with plants that are basically the same same height same species and everything like that okay all right let's look at this one in a science experiment the students were asked to measure the elongation of a spring every time a different mass is applied in it so remember what do you what are you testing here you are testing the elongation of a spring every time a different mass is applied to it so what is it that you are varying the mass and then what are you testing 
the elongation of a spring of the spring that you are using and the question here is which of the following is the independent variable what would be the answer to this one it's letter b the mass attached to the spring right because you are varying the mass that you applied to it okay next what would be the dependent variable in your in your experiment the answer is letter a correct the elongation of the spring